Hi everyone, welcome back to the NS Pharma YouTube channel. Today we will see important multiple choice questions from Pharmacology chapter anti antenal drugs. Anti antenal drugs. This is one of the important chapter from the cardiovascular system. We will move to the first question of this video. The following drug is used to reduce the frequency of angina pectoris as well as to terminate an acute attack. The following drug is used to reduce the frequency of angina pectoris as well as to terminate an acute attack. Options are isosorbide dinitrate, option B pentaerythritol tetranitrate, Option C, diltiazem. Option D, dipyridamol. The correct answer for this question is isosorbide dinitrate. Isosorbide dinitrate. We'll move to the next question. Second question, anti-antenal drugs afford the following benefits. Options are terminate anti, I mean antenal attack, decreases the frequency of antenal attack, Option C, retard the progression of coronary artery diseases. Option D, both A and B are correct. Here you can see in the question, one, itself the answer is there. The drug which is used to reduce the frequency of angina pectoris as well as to terminate acute attack. So, here in the second question, anti antenal drugs are for the following benefits. One is terminated antenal attack and the second one is it decreases the frequency of antenal attack. So, the correct answer is both A and B is the correct, that is option D. Now, we will move to the next question of this video, question number three. Choose the correct statement about the action of nitrates on coronary vessel. Choose the correct statement about the action of nitrates on coronary vessel. Option A, they mitigate antenna pectoris by increasing total coronary flow. They preferentially dilate conducting arteries without affecting resistance arterioles. Option C, they preferentially dilate autoregulatory arterioles without affecting larger arteries. Option D, they increase sub-epicardial blood flow without affecting sub-endocardial blood flow. We know that these nitrates will dilate the coronary vessels. So here we have to opt for option A and option D is not correct. So the correct answer for this question is Option B, they preferentially dilate conducting arteries. They preferentially dilate conducting arteries without affecting resistance arterioles. Now we will move to the fourth question. Fourth question, organic nitrate relax vascular smooth muscle by. Organic nitrate relax vascular smooth muscle by. The mechanism by uh, uh, nitrates are relaxed muscular smooth muscle is by option A increasing intracellular cyclic GMP, option B increasing intracellular cyclic AMP, option C decreasing intracellular cyclic AMP, option D both A and C are correct. The here nitrates mechanism is by through increasing intracellular cyclic GMP. The correct answer is option A is the correct answer. Now we will move to the next question. Before that, we will see one important point regarding uh, dipyridamol. Here we studied. Here we studied they preferentially dilate conducting arteries without affecting resistance arteriole. Resistant arterioles. The same way we can see di dipyridamol causes coronary steel. This one we will discuss after coronary. Here we have to note it down that dipyridamol causes dipyridamol is also a medicine against antenna pectoris. It is also using uh, anti antenna used as an anti antenna drug dipyridamol. Dipyridamol causes coronary steel. The question will come directly. Which of the following causes coronary steel? 
example is dipyridamol now we will move to the fifth question select the organic nitrate which undergoes minimum first pass metabolism in the liver select the organic nitrate which undergoes minimum first pass metabolism option a glycerol trinitrate option b iso isosorbide dinitrate i option c isosorbide mononitrate and the last option erythritol tetranitrate the correct answer for this question question number 5 that is organic nitrate which uh, undergoes minimum first pass metabolism is option c isosorbide mononitrate isosorbide mononitrate is the correct answer now we will move to the next question question number 6 nitrate tolerance is least likely to develop with the use of Nitrate tolerance is least likely to develop with the use of option A, sustained release oral glyceryl trinitrate, sublingual glyceryl trinitrate, transdermal glyceryl trinitrate, oral pentaerythritol tetranitrate. So when we are using this sublingual glyceryl nitrate, the chances of nitrate tolerance is very least. So, for nitrate tolerance is least in case of sublingual glycerol trinitrate. Now, the seventh question. Glycerol trinitrate is administered by the following routes except. It's asking for the glycerol nitrate. Uh, trinitrate is administered by the following routes except through oral. We know that some oral sprays are there. Then sublingual tablet, intramuscular injection, intravenous injection. The correct answer for this question is intramuscular. We cannot use, we are not using glycerol trinitrate. The glycerol trinitrate is, is not administered through intramuscular injection. Now we will move to the eighth question. The dihydropyridines, dihydropyridine, that means it's a type of calcium channel blocker, block the following type of calcium channel. Dihydropyridine blocks the following type of calcium channel. The different type of calcium channel is there, L type, ET type, TN type. Option D, receptor operated calcium channel. Out of this, which of the following is blocked by dihydropyridine? calcium channels calcium channel blockers so dihydropyridine category in dihydropin actually calcium cal this one we will discuss here calcium channel blockers are classified into three categories ccb that is calcium channel blocker they are classified into three type one is phenyl alkylamine phenyl alkylamine that is the first one and the second one is uh, uh, dihydropyridines before that benzothiazepine second option benzothiazepine is the second one and the third and last one is this is dihydropyridine dhp dihydropyridines they are the three type of classification of CCB that is calcium channel blockers example of phenylalkylamine is verapamil 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 then benzodiazepine is diltiazem diltiazem is the example for benzodiazepine diltiazem then the third option dihydropyridines they are amlodipine, nifedipine, felodipine then uh, like that it will end with a dipine dipine okay so dihydropyridine then uh, benzodiazepine then phenylalkylamine these are the three classes of calcium channel blocker in this question the dihydropyridines that is DHP DHP Block the following type of calcium channel, option L type, option T type, option C, N type and the, that last one a receptor mediator. The correct answer for this question is L type. Even if they are asking that uh, calcium channel directly without uh, mentioning the uh, type of uh, calcium channel, it's if directly asking a calcium channel blockers will block which of the following type of channel at that time also you had for L type most of the calcium channel blockers will block L type voltage sensitive channels only 
Now we will move to the next question. Question number nine. The antidotal effect of sodium nitrite in cyanide poisoning is depend upon. We know that in cyanide poisoning we are giving sodium nitrite as antidote. For that one depend upon which will depend upon option a chemical combo combination of sodium nitrite with cyanide vasodilation caused by sodium nitrite option C conversion of hemoglobin to methemoglobin by sodium nitrate option D facilitation of cyanocobalamin formation by sodium nitrate what is the mechanism behind this sodium nitrate is used in the cyanide poisoning Correct answer for this question is option C that is sodium nitrate will help in the conversion of hemoglobin to methemoglobin. So this is the mechanism here I will mention here itself you can see so hemoglobin when a, when a, when a patient is taken when a man, person is taken cyanide as poisoning his hemoglobin hemoglobin is Cyanide, free cyanide is making the problems. Free cyanide is poisonous. If it is, uh, uh, it is combined with hemoglobin, there is no problem at all. So for that, we will give uh, sodium nitrate. Sodium nitrate we will give. So hemo sodium nitrate. When sodium nitrate is given as antidote, the hemoglobin present in the blood, which will be converted into meth hemoglobin. Meth hemoglobin. Meth hemoglobin. It is converted to meth hemoglobin. This method, meth hemoglobin will react with uh, will cyanide. That is, cyanide has more affinity towards meth hemoglobin. So it will form cyano meth hemoglobin. Cyano meth hemoglobin. Okay, you understood? So the base free cyanide is the problem. Free cyanide, if it is present in the body, that will make that is dangerous so when the patient is taken cyanide when a patient is uh, poisoned with cyanide he, uh, sodium nitrate is given this sodium nitrate will react with hemoglobin it will help in the conversion of hemoglobin in the uh, present in the blood into meth hemoglobin this meth, ho, meth hemoglobin have more affinity towards cyanide so this is converted into cyanometh hemoglobin now cyanide is not there in the free form that means there is no poisonous effect of cyanide now but since this is not stable cyanometh cyanometh hemoglobin you have to convert into uh, this one it's a, into stable form for that we will give sodium thiosulfate sodium thiosulfate we will give sodium thiosulfate afterwards this sodium thiosulfate in the presence of sodium thiosulfate cyanometh hemoglobin is converted into meth hemoglobin like before meth hemoglobin as well as sodium thiocyanate sodium thiocyanate the cyanide is coming as sodium thiocyanate now this sodium thiocyanate is excreted in urine it is directly excreted in urine. So cyanide is getting outside. So there is no poisonous effect of cyanide. I hope you understood this one. This is very important. Hemoglobin in the present of a sodium nitrate is converted to methemoglobin. Cyanide have more affinity towards methemoglobin. It is converted to cyanomethemoglobin. Then in the presence of sodium thiosulfate is converted into methemoglobin and sodium thiocyanide. The sodium thiocyanide is excreted in urine. Now we will move to the next question. Question number 10. Which of the following drug is a potassium channel opener? Potassium channel opener. This is an important question. Mm, potassium channel opener. Options are nicorandyl, hydralazine, glibenglamide and amyloride. The correct answer for this question is option A, nicorandyl. Nicorandyl in example 4, potassium channel opener. Now we will move to the next question. Question number 11. Which of the following that is select the drug which is a potassium channel opener. Here again the potassium channel opener as well as nitric oxide donor. It is also a nitric oxide donor. Options are diazoxide, sodium nitroposide, minoxidil, nicorandyl. Here you can see this minoxidil. Here you can see the minoxidil is also a potassium channel, potassium channel opener. So 
here the Quran is also a potassium channel opener that we even already studied but since here it is mentioned nitric oxide donor we have to opt for Nicorandil 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 is the correct answer here the question number 11 it's a potassium channel opener as well as nitric oxide I mean a nitric oxide donor then uh, diazoxide, this one. Diazoxide is also a potassium channel opener. Next question, question number 12. Coronary steel phenomenon that we discussed in that uh, uh, second question, I think. Dipyridamol has been not most uh, frequently with option and glycerol, high nitrate, dipyridamol, propranolol, diltiasm. The correct answer is dipyridamol. Dipyridamol is the correct answer here. Dipyridamol. So thank you guys for watching this video. Hope you understood all this thing. And before that, before leaving, we will see some uh, the classification of anti-antenal drugs. The classification. These uh, medicines, uh, anti-antenal drugs, are classified different medicines used for this anti-angina. Anti-angina is uh, one is nitrate. One option is nitrate. One medicine mainly used is nitrate. The problem with the nitrate is tolerance. That one we discussed. And the second uh, nitrates are two types: short-acting, long-acting. Long, long acting. Short-acting example is glycerol trinitrate. Short-acting and long-acting. Short-acting is the glycerol trinitrate, trinitrate or GTN. Then the long-acting example is isosorbide dinitrate, isosorbide mononitrate, etc. And the second option, beta blockers. Beta blockers. Beta blockers. Examples: propranolol, metaprolol, actinolol. All are examples for beta blockers. Third option is CCB, calcium channel blockers. That one we already discussed. The three classes of calcium channel blockers: phenylalkylamine, benzothiazepine, dihydropyridine. Now the last I mean, uh, fourth option potassium channel opener potassium channel opener example used in the uh, this one anti angina drug is nicorandil this one minoxidil and diazoxide is not used here minoxidil is, I mean, we know that which is using for the alopecia mainly in the alopecia uh, so here nicorandil is the example uh, potassium channel opener which is acting as anti angina drug is nicorandil now the last one others others uh, other drug as dipyridamol other drugs is dipyridamol oxyphedrine ranolazine etc are others so thank you guys for watching this video